Hello, hello, good morning. It's Adil, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for Thursday, the 28th of July 2016. Please be, visit, please be sure to visit Trade Signaler, signals and market updates for leading providers, www.tradesignaler.com. You can download the app at the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, now let's try and um, Let's try and uh, work this out, folks, in terms of uh, the market reaction. We certainly have a lot of variables to take into account. So first of all, from a chronological perspective, we had weaker US data yesterday. OK, so again, that certainly uh, hurt the markets uh, from a sentiment perspective. Then we had the uh, FOMC decision again, from my interpretation and my readings through it, it certainly Certainly seemed hawkish to me, given the fact that September and December were certainly live, but the market has interpreted that as being uh, dovish, hence the reason why you've seen a, a fall in the US dollar index. Okay, uh, in terms of um, the markets thereafter, we had earnings from Facebook that certainly has uh, triggered a new potential high in the uh, NASDAQ overnight. You've uh, bro broken through 47.20 now. Uh, really, the next resistance in the Nasdaq is at 47.40. Okay, so again, certainly her helping uh, the sentiment there. Then overnight in Asia, we've had a lackluster session. In, F in essence, overall net, net negative. The Hang Seng negative, the Nikkei negative, and the Shanghai more or less flat. Okay, uh, the particularly the Nikkei. Nikkei is certainly weak, weaker on the back of, uh, even though we have a potential 26 trillion stimulus package, is certainly weaker as well. Bring up the chart Nikkei, you can see that we're certainly holding that gap fill resistance and weakness persists again with the Shanghai as well. Certainly seeing weakness there too. So, especially after yesterday's uh, two, uh, I think a three percent sell off on the Shanghai, certainly indicating weakness, and you have an unfilled gap potential to close below. So, again, from my understanding, certainly indicating risk aversion. Now, the uh, the, the biggest problem that the uh, FOMC being uh, dovish has a uh, created for the European indices is a euro. The euro USD, as you can see here, has certainly spiked high up to 1.1, and that's certainly hurting equity prices in Europe, okay? So it will certainly keep European equities at bay and keep them under pressure. So certainly take that into consideration too. Economic data, fundamentals this morning, now that I've summed up the uh, movements overnight, the fundamentals this morning, we've had um, Really, we, overnight, really, import export for Australia certainly weaker, therefore raising uh, the prospect of a potential uh, rate cut. Unemployment numbers out from uh, Germany at the moment certainly came in slightly stronger. And now we're looking forward to services, consumer confidence, industrial confidence, business climate, etc. out in the next 20-odd 20 minute, 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes in the Eurozone. We have CPI data from Germany as well, jobless claims, goods trade balance, Kansas Fed. So... Certainly uh, a lot of U US data out later on. So again, keep an eye on that, okay? Earnings out this morning certainly have been stronger, but the stronger euro certainly negates that. And to a large extent, one could argue that those uh, earnings certainly have been factored in to the market. So already now, if I bring up the chart, the S&P Europe 350, you can clearly see here on the daily chart, you are now into that FIB 75%. You're certainly holding that as resistance as well, indicating a move lower. Same concept here with regards to the uh, stock 600. <clears throat> holding this key diagonal trend line and therefore indicating resistance okay looking at the german dax uh, let's bring up the daily chart of the german dax obviously with the nasdaq being higher german dax certainly went on a uh, little adventure in the morning and certainly has uh, re reversed okay at the back of that stronger euro 60 minute chart at the moment really it's um, still holding this diagonal trend line for now on the german dax but again certainly remains vulnerable to being closed so again Keep an eye on that, okay, folks? If you just take the pivot high from here, connect these highs together, you certainly have this bullish channel that certainly is vulnerable to being broken down. Especially given the fact that now that we have the NASDAQ, if I bring up the NASDAQ, remember the DAX and NASDAQ are intertwined to a large extent, and that's why we're seeing this rally in the um, in the DAX at the moment. Okay, let me just bring up the NASDAQ chart. Where are you, NASDAQ? Here we are. Okay, so NASDAQ at the moment, looking at the weekly chart, Clearly see resistance here around the 4700 to 4740 zone, okay? Currently trading at 4720, therefore indicating risk aversion, okay? Now, okay, so you can certainly see a resistance on the NASDAQ here, okay? S&P 500, let's bring up that for you as well. S&P 500 certainly has created a wall of resistance at 2175, okay? So, and uh, you clearly have a H&S formation brewing as well. 
with potential downside target at 21.52 as gap fill, and then you have 21.37. Ideally, it's 21.45 based on the uh, mathematical numbers. So, again, looking for risk aversion here. Okay, US markets certainly are into resistance now, and therefore looking for weakness in uh, European session. Okay, now going back to the uh, French CAC now, let's just bring up the French CAC for you. CAC, I've shot, I'm currently short the CAC and short the Euro stocks on the back of gap fill resistance and obviously 200 MA resistance and therefore looking for weakness. 60 minute chart is an inside bar. Okay, you had a bearish engulfing candle. Now we're looking to potentially close the gap below. So my target would certainly be 4400 on the downside. Okay, for the French CAC. Right, okay, so uh, let's bring up the FTSE 100 now. FTSE 100 certainly mixed at the moment. Uh, daily chart, the FTSE certainly holding that key resistance zone, okay, around that 4750 zone, okay. Again, quite important, this horizontal resistance certainly has been held. Weekly chart certainly shows you resistance on the FTSE, certainly putting in a doji. Now, the FTSE 100 should, certainly is confirmed by weakness on the FTSE 250, folks, okay. You can see daily chart, the FTSE 250 into resistance. So, therefore, looking for resistance on the FTSE 100. Going down to the 60-minute chart now. Okay, so we've had this breakout. We've certainly tested the uh, the actual uh, breakout, and we actually failed, really. If you look at it from that perspective, we hit a pivot low of 6.720, which isn't a good sign, okay? So, therefore, looking for a potential uh, weaker move, okay? Looking for a move lower now, okay? Especially given the fact that shallow earnings certainly weaker. Although you did have the potential uh, weaker dollar bounce, so you were expecting a weaker dollar bounce, and that hasn't transpired, okay? Uh, and also given the fact that oil prices are languishing at $41 is in indicating risk aversion, okay? Last but not least, looking at the Euro stocks, folks. Let's just bring up the Euro stocks for you. Okay, Euro stocks chart at the moment. Daily chart certainly into resistance, as you can see here. A uh, potential um, shooting star formation, looking for reversal. Doji candle now confirming that, looking at the 60-minute chart. Again, looking for weakness. Uh, you do have higher highs and higher lows, but that certainly is coming to an end. So from my perspective, looking for risk aversion, looking for weakness, and I'm looking for this potential gap to close at 2.30 in the back of stronger euro. Okay, right. I think that's a good summation. For now, be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and take advantage of that 25% bonus.